Hi, it's Millie, and thank you guys for jumping into the nook. It's time for my Hispanic Heritage reading vlog. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. It's time for another reading vlog. This is going to be a two-week reading vlog for the first half of October, and it's also going to be celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, where we are going to be reading books by Latinx authors with Latinx main characters and amazing representation. So I'm really excited to be doing this video series. Hispanic Heritage Month is kind of a weird month uh, to film because it's from September 15th to October 15th, so it's not a full direct month. So for this one, I usually just do it um, in October because a lot of the books end up having a spooky kind of theme to it anyways. Um, I remember I did this last year and it was not as successful because I didn't really like um, a lot of the books that I picked up. So I'm hoping that I have a much more successful time this time around. So if you guys have checked out my October TBR, then you guys already know some of the books that I am interested in trying. Um, I don't have a like specific TBR, just kind of a lot of ones that have interest me, so I'm definitely going to be mood reading a lot throughout this. Um, so I have some adult sci-fi, some adult romance, some YA contemporary. Um, a lot of these books are queer, which is amazing. Um, so I'm just really excited to get started. So I actually have less than two weeks to finish this reading vlog and also edit and have it up for you guys because I am going to be traveling on October 14th um, so I need to basically be done reading so I can start editing by October 12th um, so that really gives me only like a week and a half to read and then like a day or two to edit and have it uploaded before I go on vacation um, because once I do I'm just not going to have access to my laptop in order to edit so it's going to be a very very dry spell if I don't get it up by then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with two books. Um, these are both audiobooks. Actually all of these are basically audiobooks except for one that's a physical book. But um, these two audiobooks I'm going to start off in particular um, and they're just the ones I'm gravitating towards the most right now so we'll see how it goes. So the first one that I'm going to be picking up is Here to Stay by Adriana Herrera. And this one is a adult contemporary romance. We're following our main character, Julia. She um, moved to Dallas. She was a New Yorker, born and raised. She moved to Dallas um, to basically follow her longtime boyfriend. But then he quickly cheats on her um, a couple weeks into them having completely moved their lives to Dallas for his job. And so they break up and she is left with the apartment in Dallas. Um, she was able to land a job and it's kind of like her dream job. And so she doesn't want to admit defeat and go back to New York um, because she doesn't want the whole I told you so comments uh, coming from people because she, you know, left her job to follow a man. So she's determined to make this work and it's kind of her story as she's trying to make um, her career work because there are some consultants that are coming into her company because they are potentially going to cut her department um, if upon review it's not seen as like a viable thing to the company and she's part of the non-profit sector for like all of the charities um, and fundraising aspects of her work so her work is really important but she knows that it's like the first to go on the chopping block so anyways we have that and we have her main love interest which is one of the consultants that have come to review her work and so it's just kind of her having to have restarted her life in Dallas Texas and her finding this potential romance and so it's kind of like an office romance so I'm excited to give this one a try all right so the other one that I'm gonna be picking up is a Y contemporary book and that one is the lesbianas guide to Catholic school by Sonata Reyes and so this one is a Y contemporary book where we're following a character who identifies as a lesbian. She is a young teenage girl and she is closeted, however, and so nobody knows about her sexuality. She does not want to be outed in any way and she's trying really hard to pass as a straight girl. So she ends up going to a Catholic school with her younger brother um, because she had been, I think, 
kind of outed in her public school and so she's determined to go to this Catholic school in order for her mother not to find out that she is lesbian because her mother would disapprove and potentially kick her out of the house. So it's kind of her story as she's struggling hard to keep her sexuality a secret while at the same time ends up becoming best friends with the only openly queer person at her private Catholic school and just kind of fighting um, her crush feelings towards her new best friends with trying to maintain her secret. So I feel like this one is definitely going to have a lot of good representation. I love that it's a queer story. It is a kind of more not being comfortable with your sexuality kind of queer story which I know has been a little overdone the last couple of years um but I feel like this one I don't know there's something about it that really intrigues me for it and I feel like it's going to be special also the cover for this is just so badass and gives me like all the good vibes so I'm excited to start off these two books so yeah I'm gonna be listening to both of these as audiobooks and then um, I will give you guys some more updates once I am, you know, further along into the story to give you guys my preliminary thoughts. And uh, here's to hoping that I have a very successful Hispanic Heritage Month reading vlog. Hey guys, so I'm sitting down for this reading update because I already know that I'm going to be here for a while ranting about both of these books. Alright, so it's been a couple days since I updated you guys and I have started both of these books. However, I'm only about 20% through both of them. I thought I would be further along, um, but I was kind of dragging my feet on one of them and decided just to start the other one to just keep myself going because if not, I was just not going to read anything or finish anything this month. So um, there's one book that I'm not really enjoying and the other one that I'm absolutely loving. So let's first talk about the one that I'm not enjoying. All right, so the one that I'm not really enjoying that much right now is the adult romance book, Here to Stay. Um, so for this one, it's a dual POV. So we're following Julia and Rocco um, as their kind of journey for liking each other, but trying to maintain professional boundaries. And <laughs> I have so many conflicting feelings about this book. So one of the things that I will say is that I feel like I'm definitely the minority in this situation and there are so many other people who really like this book, really rate it highly, and I think that if you're still interested in this book you should definitely pick it up because it could just be me. I could just be overly picky about this. So some of the good things that I will point out about this book is that it has a lot of wonderful Latinx representation. We have Julia who is a half Dominican, half Puerto Rican woman who is just so strong, so independent, um, so career focused, but also just has a lot of self love for herself. She knows what she wants. She's not afraid to go for it. She's not afraid to like fight for her beliefs. She just ha is so put together. She just really has her shit together and she's doing a lot of great work. She works in uh, social work and social justice. She works at a nonprofit to work at an after school program for immigrant youths and unaccompanied minors. And it's just she's such a powerful character that's doing such amazing work in this like fictional realm and you you want more people like that in the real world and we have Rocco who he definitely has a job that most people would consider being a shark because he's there to kind of trim the fat of businesses that are spending too much money and that involves sometimes having people get fired and let go um, and so he's you know usually seen as the bad guy because of his job but he's genuinely a nice guy. He really tries to help the businesses that he consults for in helping them continue their good work just in a way that's more affordable for them in order to still continue to be a financially successful business and corporation. And he also is a person who has his shit together and has his head on straight and has like amazing morals and beliefs and is very empathetic and very sensitive and very supportive to the people around him. He's definitely like someone you would consider an ally. So we have these two amazing characters. The only problem is that even though I find these characters so amazing, as characters in a story, they're utterly boring. And it's because they're almost too perfect. 
See, the fact is we're starting off in the book with them already kind of having their shit together on a personal level, on a career level, and it's just their story of romance and kind of navigating through them being romantically attracted to each other but also kind of on opposite sides in a professional setting because he's basically there to like potentially close down her department and get her fired and get her let go um and she's also trying not to cross professional boundaries and kind of prove her case um while also finding herself being like romantically attracted to this person and also they're developing a friendship with each other um, but the story for me is so boring because just from the get-go there was so much insta-love like you can tell that these two people found each other so attractive and just wanted to rip each other's clothes off and go at it and they are but they are such professional people and so they don't want to cross that line um, but they're both just eye-fucking each other the entire time and everybody else around them knows it um, and so it's just kind of boring because like you know they're gonna end up together the tension is supposed to be there but it isn't really for me because it's so much of so of like you know they're going to get together the minute their like professional business partnership ends you know they're going to be in each other's bedrooms so there's no like mystery kind of like will they won't they in that regards and they're so put together and so I don't feel like I have like individual character development so when I'm reading their different POVs, it's just them fawning over the other person and talking about how amazing the other person is in a way of trying to like, you know, tell the reader how amazing they are and why they're falling in love with them. So I understand why people love these characters and I understand how amazing it is to have the representation for this book. Um, just so much positive representation and I love what that's doing and I think that it's great that a book like this exists um, but for me as a person who likes romance books it's a boring storyline and so I'm finding enjoyment wise I just don't want to pick up the book and so I could feel that I was like dragging my feet on picking up this book and that was definitely um, affecting my reading and I didn't want to start picking up any other book either and so I was just like I need to like put this book aside for a second pick out some other books and just see if I'm like going through a reading funk right now or if it's just this book and considering the fact that I've been reading other books and have been really enjoying them I can safely say that it's this book that I'm just not vibing with um I will say at this point I'm only 20% through the book um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from the audiobook to the ebook because I, I can't stand the audiobook. It's a dual POV, so we have a female narrator and a male narrator. And the male narrator is being very authentic to the character who is described as having a very, very heavy New York Bronx accent. And the narrator has also given the character a very heavy accent but he speaks so fast that I legitly thought that my um, Libby app had glitched and had like sped up by itself and I had to check to make sure that no it's at the same speed as the other narrator it's just he talks so fast and has such a heavy accent like I commend <laughs> his authenticity authenticity to this character um, and their actual accent but I just couldn't understand it which made it for a kind of a more difficult read and also because it was just listening to them fawning over each other I was kind of getting bored by the audiobook so I'm switching to the ebook and I'm hoping that kind of helps I think under normal circumstances this would be a book that I would DNF but I just I want to like give it a fair shot and also because I have a suspicion that because we're getting so much like lust uh, feelings for each other I feel like the smut scenes are going to be really good and spicy so that might bump up the enjoyment level for me so yeah I'm gonna continue reading the book but I'm switching to the ebook version and I'm seeing if that helps me enjoy this book more all right so on to the book that I am really enjoying right now I am also 20% through the lesbiana's guide to catholic school and this is a Y contemporary book and this is the kind of Y contemporary book that is reminding me how much I enjoyed YA Contemporary last year. Last year I read a lot of good ones and this year is just 
really the whole YA demographic has really been kind of a dud for me in terms of rating wise but this book is just oh, it's bringing back that love so I am loving this book because it's just so easy to read I am enjoying every second of it I don't feel like I am being overly critical of like the characters or the plot or the writing because I'm just enjoying the story and it's like it's wonderful when a book can get to that level where my little editing brain turns off and I can just enjoy the book for being a story. Um, I also love our main character. She is so just amazing and strong and she goes through so much she really has to be kind of the backbone for her family there's a lot of pressure for her to be a provider financially um, to be kind of like protecting her brother and making sure that he doesn't get into trouble for helping her mother and her business and just kind of keeping the family together and she definitely goes through the situation that is seen a lot in the Latino community which is the favoritism towards sons over daughters which is very much a true thing and I have seen that firsthand in different um, families that I have met in my life where there's definitely a preference towards the sons over the daughters and you can definitely see that in this story. Uh, the main character and her younger brother are only one year apart um, but she is held to such a higher standard and any little thing that her brother does to mess up is somehow blamed on her um, for not being there to watch out for him for not being there to take care of him and he gets away with so much more things than she does on top of that there's the extra element of religion going into this because her mother is heavily Catholic her younger brother is also um, pretty devout to the faith and she herself has kind of given up on that faith um, because of her sexuality and she just no longer feels that connection to church and to her religion um, and so there's definitely that added guilt factor to it of having been raised in that religion and then not feeling like she could really be a part of it because her sexuality is considered a sin and just that constant fear of like anybody finding out her secret and that means that she would get kicked out she would get disowned and she's constantly talking about having to save up money and set it aside just in case she gets kicked out so that she can pay for the first month's rent um, if she has to move out and live on her own at 16. And for her to be under that constant pressure and just that constant fear is so heartbreaking. And she really tries her best given the circumstances and the situation. And so there's kind of a lot of grace I have for the character if she does make mistakes here and there. Um, just because I understand that she's not a regular teenager. She's a teenager who's going through a lot more um, adult problems and a lot more things that are traumatic for her. Um, but I just really enjoy this story. I really like it. It's making me angry in the right ways because there are instances of racial um, discrimination. Um, injustices homophobia where she has to like bite her tongue and not say anything and I feel so enraged for her as I'm reading these situations um, so I'm getting angry in the best way <laughs> um, also this book is reminding me a lot of Elizabeth Acevedo books so if you've picked up some of her books I would consider these like comp titles for that um, definitely the lyrical writing style is not the same because Elizabeth Acevedo's work is very lyrical, very um, prose, and this one is written in a more contemporary uh, style of writing, but the character work and the more emotional aspect to the Latinx experience is really similar to work that I've read from Elizabeth Acevedo. So if you've liked her previous work, you guys would definitely like this book. So this one, I'm just so excited to continue picking up and to continue reading this one. And it's been a joy so far. To read it. I love it. Guys, so I have not been making much progress with Here to Stay, but I have been making a lot of progress with The Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School. Um, so at this point, it is the weekend, and I've been continuing to listen to this audiobook. I'm at the 55% mark through it, and I am absolutely loving this one. Like, this one definitely has the potential to be a five-star book. 
Um, I am just loving our main character and everything that she's going through in this book and she's she's messing up so much right now but like I and I'm seeing the train wreck of it all but I'm loving it because I know that the payoff is going to be super sweet. Um, we already had like this plot twist reveal um, that like I wasn't anticipating and then I started kind of getting like subtle hints of being like wait what if this happens no that can't be and then it does and I got so excited because this was definitely the direction that I wanted the book to take and it I was so happy so sorry I have to be vague about it but it's definitely spoilers so I'm not going to mention it but I am just loving so much the friendship that she has with her brother um, the friendship that she has with her father because she is so close to him and she gets she feels seen by him in a way that she just can't relate to with her mother and I just I just love this book so much it's like it's giving me all the good feels and I'm just really enjoying it and I know this is a really short update I don't have much else to say except for the fact that I'm really liking this book um yeah I also have to finish reading here to stay <laughs> which I'm not looking forward to and I feel really bad about but that's where we're at right now all right, I'm going to go ahead and do some editing this weekend uh, while listening to some more audiobooks, and I will let you guys know how that goes. Hey guys, so I'm pretty sure the lighting here sucks, and it's like 11.30 at night, it's really late, but I just had to come in here and say that I finished The Lesbianist Guide to Catholic School tonight, and oh my god, guys, this book was perfect. Not a single complaint about this book. It's so fantastic. I absolutely love this book. I had actually given you guys a reading update earlier today and I thought it was going to take me a couple more days to finish this book. Nope, I could not put this book down. I could not stop reading it and I got so emotional during a couple of parts. Like I didn't full-on cry but like I had to stop reading and just like take in what I had read because I was feeling all of these feels and just like the raw emotional aspect of this book it was fantastic like also the plot there was a plot twist that I didn't see coming and I love the fact that this book wasn't predictable for me because it just made it so much more enjoyable that way but all of like the really hard-hitting topics were just done so tactfully and there were so many characters in here that were just represented so well and felt so relatable and it really kind of like gave importance to the fact that these were teenagers with teenager problems but also real life problems and just giving the importance of it and oh, it felt so good it felt so good to read this book and enjoy it as much as I did this is five fucking stars it's sheer perfection highly recommended and I went back to look this is a debut novel a debut novel like I am going to read anything that this author comes out with because Miss Reyes you have not proven me wrong yet so I I have my full faith in you right now I absolutely love this book love it I'm obsessed read it pick it up hey guys um so it's Wednesday and I figured I should give you guys an update so originally the plan was that I was going to finish reading by the end of the day and be editing so that my video would be uploaded before I leave on vacation this Friday. Um, the only problem is that I started Just Your Local Bisexual Disaster on Monday and I'm only 25% through this book and I'm only 50% through Here to Stay. So I'm a little bit behind schedule and now I'm starting to panic a little bit. Um, because I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time to finish both books by the end of today and also to like edit everything and have it uploaded um, because if I don't have this video uploaded then you guys aren't going to be seeing any videos for two weeks um, <laughs> and that's just too long that's just too long leaving you guys uh, on red basically so um, yeah I don't really have much to add to here to stay I don't think I'm gonna have any thoughts until I finish that book um, but I did start Just Your Local bi Bisexual Disaster, and I'm feeling very conflicting feelings about this book. 
So in this book we're following our main character Maggie who is a teenage girl. She's about 16, she's starting her junior year with all of her friends that she's had since middle school and um, she's openly bisexual to her friends and family in her community. So her younger sister um, is having her quinceanera in a couple of months and so Maggie has to bring a date and escort to the party um, and she really wants her next escort to be kind of like an actual date. Um, and so she realizes that she needs kind of like this deadline in order for her to figure out her feelings because she currently has crushes on three different people and having very conflicting romantic kind of love interests and just feeling very confused about herself and her feelings not only for her like friendships and romantic partners but also like issues with her family and also what she wants to do for her future, whether she wants to leave her city for college or not, what exactly she wants to do, and it's basically kind of just going through a teenage existential crisis and so she really needs the deadline of the quinceanera in order for her to pick who she wants not only as an escort but who she's actually interested instead of feeling these conflicting feelings over three different people. And just to kind of add to the messiness of it, the three different people include one, her ex-boyfriend Matthew, who is still part of the friend group, who has a new girlfriend and she's feeling kind of like residual feelings towards him and he is giving her mixed signals that he might be interested in her again. And then the second one is her very straight best friend Amanda, who she's had kind of a secret crush ever since middle school but has never acted upon it because she is straight and her best friend and those feelings are coming back up to the surface again uh, especially when Amanda is also showing her potential romantic interest as well even though she has a boyfriend and then the third love interest is Danny who is the new girl at school and she has recently joined their friend group and she may or may not be queer and she may or may not be flirting with Maggie, our main character. So she's definitely feeling a lot of things towards all of these people and she's very confused about it. And so the book is showing kind of like that messiness of teenage life. So the reason why I'm feeling kind of conflicting feelings about this book is because I'm not really invested in Maggie as our main character, nor the plot. Like I'm not really interested in who she picks and her going over this dilemma of trying to figure out her feelings. And so while there's nothing really inherently wrong with the book, um, I'm just not into it. I, I, I don't care right now, which is the problem, um, which is why it's been so slow moving over the last two days to read this book. And I'm supposed to finish it by the end of today, which is also a lot of pressure when I'm not especially like interested in the book right now. Okay, so I'm going to continue listening to Just Your Local Bisexual Disaster. Today I work to see if I can get through some more of it and see if I have, like, different feelings towards it. Um, I'm also going to try to see if I can read some more of Here to Stay. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I'm a little worried <laughs> about getting these videos up for you guys in time, but yeah, we'll see how everything ends up going. Hey guys, so it is Friday morning, um, hence how it's dark outside and I have to use my ring light. <sighs> So I was trying to do an update a lot sooner, but everything kind of happened at the last minute. So today after work, I'm leaving for a vacation. I'm actually going to be editing this video during my break at work to try to get it uploaded to you guys by this weekend. Um, and just like a little PSA, um, this is probably going to be the last video that comes out until after I come back from vacation. So there's going to be a good week and a half after this video um, uploads onto YouTube where I'm not going to have any videos out, but then it's going to be a lot of content the last week of October. So without further ado, let's get into my final thoughts for this video. Uh, so first off, we're going to talk about Here to Stay. Um, so I technically finished this book yesterday. Um, I just sat down for a reading sprint and like just focused and read the ebook. Um, and it took me about, probably about an hour or two to just finish off the book. Um, and I think ultimately I'm giving this book three stars. I will say that the characters were a little bit less perfect um, near the end of the book, uh, simply because Julia, our main character, was really kind of focusing on not carrying the emotional baggage from previously failed relationships, 
Um, and so a lot of the things that she was worried about, her friends and family were telling her like, yeah, but that's what happened with your ex. This is a new person. Give it a shot. Give it like a fair blank slate. And then for Rocco, he's under a lot of pressure to be like the sole provider and support for his sister and his younger niece. And so he has all of that pressure. And so he makes decisions based on what's better for other people versus what's good for him and causes him a lot of unhappiness. And so they both kind of learn from that near the end of the book, um, which I did appreciate that there was like some growth, even though it was near the end. Um, the smutty scenes were good. They were good. My only complaint is that there was not enough. So the pacing for this romance was a little bit odd for me. There was a lot of like tension build up before any actual like physical romance happened between the characters. And then as soon as it happened, bam, the next chapter was six weeks later. <laughs> so it suddenly was like all the build up, it happened and then we just like zoomed forward. Um, and the story in terms of plot just like continued circling. Um, and then the ending was really abrupt. It was really dramatic and really abrupt and then all of a sudden everything was like happily ever after within one chapter. Um, so yeah, the pacing was a little bit like stop and go for me. Um, and my overall enjoyment level was just not that high for this book, which you guys could probably tell. So ultimately I'm giving this book three stars. Um, I do recommend it. I do think it's a good book and I do think that there's definitely an audience for this book. I love the representation. Just as a romance book, it didn't really do it for me and my personal preferences for romance. All right, on to the last book for this video. So I finished Just Your Local Bisexual Disaster. Um, so when I last updated you guys, it was Wednesday morning and I had gone up to about 25% and I wasn't really vibing with the book that much. I was honestly debating whether or not to DNF the book just because of like, I was already slumping through here to stay and I was like, I don't want to be slumping through another book, <laughs> just like trying to get these to, to get this video out. Um, but I was like, you know what, I'll just give it one more day. Today's the last day that I have to read before I wanted to edit. Um, so just get through it. So I continued listening to it. And then slowly, this book grew on me. Honestly, I, I probably didn't start really enjoying it until after the 50% mark, like already halfway through it. Um, definitely would have been a book that I would have DNF just because I wasn't vibing with the characters and my enjoyment level was really low. Um, as I mentioned before, I just didn't care. It felt like a very teenage problem, which I would have related to if I had read this book when I was a teenager, but as an adult, 10 plus years removed from the high school experience, I just couldn't really relate to it. Um, however, I had read a Y contemporary book previous to this, which was also set in high school with teenage problems, and it worked just fine. However, this book did a really, really weird thing for me. So the main character has a lot of messiness going on with the fact that she has feelings for multiple people and she's trying to find a date for her sister's quince. So this book is not really a romance book. This book is an exploration of love. Romantic love, platonic love, friendship love, familial love, and it is told through all of these different characters and different experiences that our main character Maggie has with all of these individuals. Once that clicked, then my enjoyment of the book skyrocketed because then I saw it for what it actually was and I was able to kind of focus on the messages behind love versus the actual romance and the actual plot of who she going to take to the quinceanera. And I really liked it. I really liked what the author had to say about it because um, Maggie's relationships with all these people were so different and once it started exploring kind of the messiness between love and how love can be different and how it doesn't matter if it's romantic love or not, you still have to respect the other person and, and try in order to keep that love between the people. Um, and it really made me reflect on 
my messy teens and early 20s like after I finished reading I went back to some old journals of mine from when I was in high school and then I read a journal from when I was in my early 20s um, which undoubtedly are my messiest years <laughs> and it was so weird to read back on it on like how I was feeling and just the overall like confusing emotions and it was it was so weird but this book really made me self-reflect a lot um so I will give it that it gave me an emotional reaction it didn't really give me the emotional reaction to the characters and to the plot but it made me think about my own life it made me question the themes and messages and so I think that the author was very successful in that way it's just the medium <laughs> in which she brought it about with the plot of the main character torn between these three people and not knowing who she wants to take as her date that was not the strongest plot and it was really really boring in the beginning until I finally started seeing the exploration of love and then I got into the book so yeah it was very kind of conflicting feelings in regards to this book where it didn't work for me and at the same time it did um, and definitely made me have like a mini existential crisis last night. So ultimately my feelings for this book is I'm going to give it a 3.5 because as a book by itself, it is good. I do recommend it. It's definitely more on the younger side of YA. Um, definitely a book for kids who are juniors and seniors in high school. Um, and it did have like that important bisexual representation and it did have like that emotional aspect and there were good messages to it um is it a five star stellar book for me no but i did end up enjoy enjoying this book <laughs> which i didn't think i was going to because i was potentially going to dnf it so it worked out all right guys so that's it it's time to close off this video so i ended up reading three books out of like the five that i had planned the one that i didn't get to that i am sad about is prime deceptions by valerie valdez but i will try to read it next month um there's still time to read that book and i know i'm going to continue with this series so it's okay that i didn't get to it this time around um, the three that I did read was The Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School, which was a five stars and probably one of my favorite contemporaries for this year. Then we had Here to Stay, which was three stars, and we had um, Just Your Local Bisexual Disaster, which was 3.5. So kind of a mixed bag, but definitely better than last year's Hispanic Heritage Month video. Alright guys, if you like this video, please be sure to give me a likes and thumbs up. Comment down below if you guys have read any of the books I mentioned in this video and what were your thoughts. And as always, if you guys are enjoying my bookish videos, please subscribe for more. I'm Millie. Thank you guys for jumping into the neck. Bye!